Um, for this half, we're just going to tell you guys some stories and then do some scenes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So to get started for these stories, I just need a suggestion of really just anything, any words. Oh, Give me some airplane. Oh, yeah. 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 Airplane? Yes. Airplane. 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 <laughs> airplane makes me think of Sterling, Virginia, which is a big airport. And Sterling, Virginia makes me think of this, uh, I guess, a miscreant we were discussing before the show. Um, Roughly around three years ago, there was an issue in Sterling, Virginia, where there was a man called the Butt Slasher. And he would go to malls and wait for large, like, endowed women with large booties to bend over, and then he would pull out a pocket knife and go, Kya! And then run away. And it was, it was a very dull pocket knife, so he never actually managed to cut anyone, but he managed to, like, catch people's pants and stuff. So this happened, and he ended up getting arrested, and there was this huge fiasco where all the newspapers said, Butt Slasher Attacks Mall Goers. And this happened, and he went to jail, and then roughly, like, three months later, another butt slashing incident occurred because there was a copycat butt slasher. <laughs> now, like, I, I don't know what would like cause someone to become a, like, a copycat butt slasher, but it's, I think it's hilarious. So this, act, this guy actually was a butt slasher, though. He had a sharp knife, and he would like cut people's butts. And it was really scary and weird, so malls were deserted for like a good three or four months. And my friend's like, we should go to Sterling Mall and like, like pat our butts. <laughs> so we went and we took, uh, um, he, he was a catcher for baseball, so we took some of the uh, extra padding he put behind his chest plate and we put them like right behind our cheeks. And we'd walk around like at various sporting goods stores and just be like, oh, look at this thing we dropped. <laughs> look at this thing we dropped. Oh no. And we did this for about like four or five hours with no, no like, no, fru no fruition came about our bending over, so uh, we, we weren't actually able to cut, catch the second butt slasher, but he did get caught, like around two weeks later. He uh, went to slash a cop's butt, and the cop turned around and pimp slapped him. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's about my uh, only real encounter with the butt slasher. <laughs> Oh, I dropped something. Johnson, don't make those jokes. You know this case is serious. <laughs> you can't just give it to me one time. No! I mean, not like... Look, we gotta cop him! <laughs> <laughs> That's a sick we're gonna catch him! We're gonna catch him and we're gonna grab him, we're gonna hold him close so we'll never get away. <laughs> not with that attitude we're not, though. Can't bring that shit in here. You got that's the best attitude. attitude. No, it's not the best attitude. You're coming in here, you're making butt jokes all the time. He cuts people's butts. This is not a funny thing. It is. No, it's not. Three hospitalized. Two pregnant women. And a baby. <laughs> oh, I didn't care about the baby incident. All right, yeah. this, is, this is serious. This is serious. This deserves its own marker board. That we can just pin things on because we're out of court courts. Is that funny? Is that no. <laughs> the giant baby ass that you drew on the board? That's not supposed to be. <laughs> no, it's not funny. It's serious. It's, it's serious. That's that's the well, yeah, that's the latest victim. And uh, I have a ball of yarn, just right in here, that we can uh, that we can that we can. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help it. Oh look, on the great. Four more hospitalized. Awesome, great. Right. If you had just played along, we would have got. I would have been over. We would have been done. We could have started putting yarn on. We might have found him already. I don't think that's gonna help. We have photos of, of the anus that has been affected, the multiple ani that has been slashed. We don't need any more That's it. That's a lot deeper of a cut than I than I envisioned. Hey, I've been avoiding the crime scene photos. Yeah. I visit the hospital patients every day. Wow, you're... <laughs> it hurts to sit like this. <laughs> it makes me have to sit like this, though. You're gonna catch him, right? I will avenge you! <laughs> you! And that baby! <laughs> you. I'll do it. Me, and they'll call me 
Butt Slasher Catcher. <laughs> it doesn't have a good ring to it, but I'll be famous. I'll be forever famous. I'll be famous. Will you marry me? No. Will you marry me? That'll be great for the story. Yes. I'll get a ring. I'll be here. Do they think that they have good rings in the gift shop? That's a new ring. You are making fun of my wife. She's pregnant. I haven't even said anything yet. I haven't even said anything yet. I swear there was no punchline there. I just noticed I know. you had a ring. I know. I was bending but over. you know what I assumed? I assumed that's where you were going. I assumed you were going to bend over and, and say something rude about my family. No, that's a hurtful assumption. Well, I'm not just a hurtful person. Well, I think you are, okay? And you know what? I'm touch and sensitive and I find butts funny. That's it. I swear I am a serious detective. And I brought yarn in my back pocket <laughs> to connect all of the agents in this case, and then we'll know exactly where he'll attack next. <laughs> I hate my job. <laughs> I'm predicting. I feel something in my ass, my bleeding. Can you help me? I think he ran that way. There's like a bayonet sticking out of his ass. <laughs> Also, this is similar to, a, to an ongoing case, so we can't disturb any evidence, but it's different enough from the, the MO of the original case that it might be a copycat. The bayonet is still attached to a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is going to be delicate because we have to disarm the rifle without it firing. <laughs> so bad. Just don't vibrate, everything will be great. <laughs> You're vibrating! <laughs> Anderson from the bomb squad here just wants to let you know methane has the possibility of igniting gunpowder automatically. Why aren't you doing this? <laughs> oh my god, my god man! Right now it's my break, it's kind of my day off, I shouldn't be here, but I felt saw you from the window as you come outside. I already pulled back the lever! I can't let go of it now! Well, you should probably hold on then. I can let go of it I mean, son, you're gonna have to contain that. If you do, it might set up the gunpowder automatically. That sounds like terrifying chemistry. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm panicking a little bit, so I'm kind of forgetting the next, the, 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 the how, to, how to take apart this, this part of the gun. I mean, the lever's back, but there's still a bullet in there. And I can't reach it, but maybe, maybe, you have a magnet. Do I have, I have one in my house. Oh, this is a new one. low. You shoved a bayonet on some guy's ass. Do you it. think nothing of me? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was a very close one. That could have discharged the gunpowder into his ass. You called the bomb squad for this joke? I didn't. I didn't call anyone. He was outside the window. Oh my mom! And this is not a joke, Harry. This has gone on. Stop vibrating. Now. Half the community is bedridden well, the other way because they can't sit in the beds correctly and you are shoving bayonets into people's asses. <laughs> no, I'm not! I just came upon this Edison while I was at the mall conveniently doing other things, not involving bayonets. I don't believe you. How many things are there at the mall that do involve bayonets vastly more than there are that don't involve bayonets? <laughs> Okay, your bayonets. <laughs> two for five dollars. No, don't make eye contact. Two they for won't five dollars. Would won't, you no, like to no, try no, our no, bayonets? No, 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 they are fresh. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what are you in for? <sighs> Bayonet thievery. Stealing bayonets? Yeah. Pretty hardcore. Thank you. Thank you. I've been stealing horses. <laughs> wow. It's pretty lucrative because no one thinks you'd do it. Yeah. 
I brought one into the prison with me. <laughs> you are really good. I even convinced the warden to let him sit outside my cell. Wow. Sometimes when they feed me oats, I like put some in my hand and then I reach outside the bars. I love that horse. <laughs> I'm seeing an opportunity here. I mean, I don't currently have any any anything past uh, 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 the B part of the plan, but I got A and I got C. A is we use the horse to escape, and C is we ride the horse into the sunset. At some point, there's some part where we have to pull. I stole fire engines. <laughs> really? <laughs> fire engines. Yeah. I can see it being looped. <laughs> <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they give me cigarettes in return. I steal prisons. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it happened again, didn't it? Yup. You just let it happen. Mm-hmm. I watched and did nothing. <laughs> like a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this is why sales are down, Stephen. So sorry. No one wants to buy prisons or horses now. <laughs> there used to be such a niche market. We had it cornered. We had a monopoly. You could ride the prisoners into the prison with the horses. They were a set. They, they came a set. as a bargain at two <clears throat> for one prices. Now everyone wants them separate. We have to cut, cut corners, literally. Our prisons don't have corners. They're all round now. <laughs> well, no, they're still square. They just have rounded edges. <laughs> That's See, most buildings are easier to make when they're square because you use a lot of concrete and you use like wooden, you use like wooden braces to hold it. Same <laughs> engineering talk. So, I'm so sorry. I spend a lot of time in R and D. Uh, okay, so I there's think... a lot of compet, 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 compet. Com competent competition. Okay, uh, let's look at this whiteboard. <laughs> Did you draw that baby butt? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if we invest in horses here, invest in prisons here. All right. They'll meet in the center. And make fire engines? Yes. There's a map. Just a map. <laughs> All right. All right. I see where you're going. Literally, we have to go to Kansas, right in the general center of this map. Here. Kansas is world renowned for their fire engines, which, because Kansas is a couple decades behind the rest of the world, are still horse drawn and <laughs> prison like because they're covered in bars because they didn't have any other construction material other than iron. <laughs> All right, Larry, I'll crank the thing. You put the hose down there. Yeah, go, go. I'll crank it. I'll get the water pressure going. You get the get the hose. You're... I'm doing it. I don't know. All right, spray the half down. It's on fire. All right. Oh my God. Hold on, the horse is taking off! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, we're moving! We're moving, hold on! We're moving! I got the fire! I got the fire! Oh, the hose is so long that it's not really a problem! <laughs> hey, 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 Rick, we're done! I don't want him to clean this up! Well, you gotta calm the horse down! He's got me now! Can I just let go of the fire? What? Wait, wait. Father was a wonderful man, and in his thanks to the efforts of our terrible police department, they burned to death in that fire in his house. <laughs> I just wish that some way they would tie their horses to fire engines. <laughs> Here they go again. Why <laughs> do they have no shame? <laughs> if the government cared about its citizens, about us, about its civilians, then they would just tie up their horses. And if the government cared about my grandfather, he would still be alive. Thank you. Hail Satan, let the proceedings commence. <laughs> Makes me think of my old superintendent. 
at my high school. Um, we used to call her the snow miser for a very specific reason. And this happened multiple times. Where um, the first time, it was in the middle of January, very cold outside, it was like negative 10. And the, we, we expected there would be a delay in the morning, at least like an hour or two hour delay, but we went into school regular time. Uh, it was about the third period when the fire alarm went off. Middle of the period. And we were in no shape to go outside, but we had to go outside because the fire alarm went off. Some people were in gym. Uh, most of us didn't have time to go get our coats. We were outside in negative 10 degree weather. And it was about 30 minutes before we got word of what to do. <laughs> and she had us march down to the next school. Now we, call, we called this, because her name was Jeannie Dangle, we called this the Dangle Death March and proceeded to forever be, ever be known as the Snow Miser because she made us march in these horrible conditions. Some people even got frostbite, so even more of a reason not to like her. But this happened so many times and for different reasons. Some, some kids got in the habit of making fake bomb threats so that the same thing would eventually happen where we'd have to vacate the school and march down to the next school. Um, now... Yeah, she was kind of mean, but you know, when you get put in situations like that, you kind of got to do what you got to do. But it was damn fun calling her the snow miser. <laughs> All right, let's do some prank bomb threats. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Cool. Let's make all those little kids just march to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, all right. Do you okay, want to talk or do you want me to talk? Oh, okay, no, you talk. Okay, I'll talk. Okay, here we go. I'll put it on speaker. Here we go. Um, hello, this is Superintendent Palmers. Uh, just want to remind you guys that bomb threats are not funny, and there were three casualties at the last one. Thank you. It's ringing. <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, hello there. Is this uh, Superintendent Eisenhower? No, this is the secretary, Mrs. Lindinger. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Lindinger. This is ISIS. We are at your school. Very well, Mark. 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 Is your refrigerator running? Well, I think we have more pressing matters. Or... We're gonna blow up your school. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna uh, die anyway, so. Well, we have a whole line for the NSA. Hey, Miss so, Eisenberg. I'm just Ms. Gonna, so, yes. Do you drive a Subaru hatchback? Uh, I think we have more perfect concerns. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't guess. Guess, guess what? Guess what? I strap to the bottom of your car. <laughs> guys, think again. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's a bomb. <laughs> if you drive home, you're gonna die, and your your kids will be without a mother. <laughs> Are you going to call your mom for a ride? Uh, I don't feel like I should inform you, mom, but I need to get more pressing matters to discuss. Do you know where your mom is? Uh, no. <laughs> This will prevent and deter any bomber from detonating a bomb. Mrs. Lewis, what 
Is he an interpreter, or...? <laughs> <laughs> he is representing what a bomber would do. <laughs> wow. These are nonverbal gestures. I am informing you through nonverbal gestures to drop your arms and get on the floor. I don't so, think I can get rid of them. So drop. You are a literal child and you are being difficult. So drop your arms. And <laughs> 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 yeah, this is a tutoring lesson for what to do. But now, so drop your arms and get on the floor. In case they have a kill switch on their person, do you know what a kill switch is? No. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Does, is it like... So they press a button... And does, it, they, does someone die? Do they get killed when they switch it? Maybe. But we don't know. Until it happens. Okay. Until it's like kill. a surprise. So there's a kill switch on a purse? Uh, on, on purse. On. on a purse? On. You're a very literal... <laughs> I just want to say, I think that... Did, like, Principal, I just think that uh, teaching lessons and disarming bombs to kindergarten is just—it's just not a wise use of our education. We should be teaching them like reading and writing, and like I, I thought the javelin throwing class—we should have phased. Well, listen, I I shut down art, technology, and other extracurricular uh, curricular activities, including speech therapy, to do this. I'm not going back on it. Uh, Assistant Principal Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Principal Ruben. <laughs> you think that's funny? I, I honestly I think it's hilarious. Look, okay, I'll say that you need to discontinue this course, okay? I something bad's gonna happen. One of these kindergartens is gonna like figure this out and like start manufacturing bombs or what, like, what could be bad about kindergartners knowing what to do if a bomb is in threat? I don't know, maybe because they can't read. <clears throat> approximately 2.30 in the morning, and the bus station is not pretty, uh, it's not a station, it's just a place on the side of the road in sort of a less than amicable place of Rochester, and uh, so I end up waiting there for ages, it's, uh, it's relatively cold, I bring a sweatshirt, everything's great. Finally the bus arrives, it barely makes it out of the city because it was breaking down earlier, that's why it was late, and I ended up going in sort of a semi-torpid, like, half conscious state as I normally do during transit. It was a very cold bus, in addition, I still didn't have a sweatshirt, so I was just curled up like this on the side of the bus in a twisted ball trying to maintain as much body heat as I could. So uh, approximately, I don't know, maybe four or five hours later, it was hard to tell because I was out of it. We ended up finally pulling into a spot in one of the, uh, what you call them, roadside rest stop, that's it. And so I, I sort of slowly emerged from my, from my nap, where I was just in a, in a completely dead state, and I realized that I desperately need to stretch, and I need a snack, and I need to do all of the things that a rest stop entails. 
And so I start to stand up and I realize I have a massive erection. <laughs> <laughs> for the scenes of my pants. <laughs> so I'm stuck on this cold bus for 15 minutes, thinking about horrible things and flexing all of my muscles, trying to remove this erection unsuccessfully, and then I'm stuck on the bus for an extra five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Even the women are getting it. <laughs> so, 